You know what? I envy you. I really do. It can't be worse than Manos. Today. Really? How dumb do you think I am? Uh, who are you talking to? The DM! This is clearly his doing! Is that what you think is happening? Oh, I know your game pretty well at this point. You always view others as aggressors in your life, don't you? <laughs> Excuse me, are you trying to do an evaluation on me right now? Of sorts, yeah. Well, I hope you're a mind reader because you're getting nothing out of me. I am picking up on something. Do you want to watch a Kevin Smith film? Uh, I... I suppose... Chasing Amy? Better. You're not funny. Give it a shot. Based on a fake ad read during a podcast, Tusk brought Kevin Smith back into the director's chair, as his passion project is but one in a trilogy of horror movies based in Canada, the others being Yoga Hosers and the upcoming Moose Jaws. That was the most insane thing I've ever said. Truth is often stranger than fiction. From this bizarre circumstance came one of the most infamous concepts in recent movie history. One man's plan to transform another person into a walrus. Immediate comparisons to human centipede come to mind, and they're apt. See, without that body horror film to put this into the cultural consciousness, this absurd and disturbing image of transfiguring people into different things, there would have been nothing for Smith the Lampoon. Did he satirize it, or did he elevate the concept? Oh, please, I'm not watching this. Don't be stupid. Okay, then stop acting stupid and watch this film with me so we can properly assess it. All right, it's a deal. Hey, you tricked me! It wasn't hard. The film begins in total darkness with a credit roll, followed shortly after by the sound of two podcasters laughing at us for paying to see this movie. You're making yourself the victim again here. They're not laughing at you, but rather a disturbing viral video. You know the answer to that. Because they're terrible people! Use your field, man! Oh. oh. Well, this does appear to be a clear-cut example of the superiority theory of humor. It posits that an individual will laugh at objectively disturbing things happening to others if that person views him or herself as more important and therefore superior to the victim. While it has been debunked as it does not explain all shock laughter, things like this and other epic fail video compilations do seem to lend credence to it. Using a dead psychological theory to explain an everyday occurrence. Bold move. Do you want to see why? Here. After our main character Wallace shows the clip, he arranges to fly and visit the now one-legged star of the video and interview him for the podcast. When he arrives in Canada to do this, he finds that the kid committed suicide as a direct result of his unwanted fame. How does Wallace react to contributing to this action? And Kill Bill Kid King killed himself, sir, with his own f***ing sword. You believe that? I'm not f***ing kidding you. I'm gonna hold out for two more days, selfish little peg leg piece of sh He's got one less freak to march out before the carnival crowd for a nickel. So he does not care. And that's a strong argument for this unearned badge of superiority that he touts to laugh and mock others with. That really bothers you, doesn't it? He's viewing people as just pawns to use up and throw away for a cheap laugh on the internet. Very akin to some reviewers that bring up films only to tear them down, using it to build their own credibility. Do you want to just keep going? It's probably for the best. Wallace finds a strange public notice hanging over the urinal in the men's room. 
I won't even lie, it took me three weeks to write this sentence because that pivotal plot point is poised over pale porcelain, prophetic to a preposterous and painfully permanent predicament. Please. I had to elevate the toilet humor somehow. If you really don't want to watch this, you're free to go. You're the one that walked in here and played the tape. The door is open. Oh, well then. The only thing that might keep you here is curiosity. <laughs> curiosity? How so? Despite this being, according to some, a human centipede ripoff, it has many more critical defenders in that franchise. And honestly, some people say this is Smith's best work in years. It rekindled something in him, inspired him to make an entire trilogy based off this one silly idea that spoke to him so loudly he couldn't stop himself from seeing it brought to life. This lit a fire that burned brighter than anyone, even he, expected. But it's just a film, so you're free to walk away. I, I'm, I'm just curious to see how this plays out. Of course. From that ad, Wallace discovers Howard Howe, an ancient mariner with many stories to weave into the night. He's a kindly old man who offers tea along with free room and board. What a rare find in this day and age. You know something else they're doing that's surprising to see? What? Respecting each other. In a film filled with people mocking one another, lying constantly, cheating, it's almost like a breath of fresh air to watch two adults acting like adults towards each other. Sitting, talking, listening to each other over drinks. You can't be this dense. Respect has nothing to do with this interaction. You said on the phone that you were much more interested in me personally than you were in the room. Yes, because I saw this. Oh. Yeah. And you have no idea. I'm up here in this frozen hole. I think my trip is a bust. And then I feel like I just stumbled into a gold mine with this thing. And you talk about sharing stories. That's what I do. I'm a storyteller by trade. He's not listening. He's mining. The whole reason he followed the bathroom ad was I, this. But I'm thinking I don't want to come all the way back with nothing. We need a show this week. So try to find some other... Canadian weirdo up here I can talk to, but... Why not find this guy, get his story, then recount to his podcasting partner how crazy the man was? I bet he'd even give the guy's address out online, giving hundreds of trolls a new juicy target. I mean, we saw how much he respected the Kill Bill kids' privacy. I, he's gonna exploit the hell out of Howard Howe if given the slightest chance. You're right. He's masquerading respect to lure his prey into his trap. Just like Howard Howe does. These two men need a mask for very different reasons to get to their end goals. One wants to get FaceTime with his internet harassment victims, and the other just waits for a chance to give them delicious, not at all laced tea in his isolated cabin. Respect is not in either of their vocabularies. I'm surprised you're criticizing them on that. It seems like they're using your move. Huh? I'm not saying Magic Mike is torture porn. I'm saying it's pornless and torturous. This whole film feels slimy. You know, I need to take a break, excuse me. What was the point of it all? From this movie, I've learned one invaluable lesson. Not all time is time well spent. But, but I didn't choose to review those. You chose this one. You know, if it weren't for the Scorsese name, people might call this opening completely incompetent. <laughs> I'm, I'm not like them. You're awfully defensive about that. And you've got an ugly beard! Disrespect is a lifestyle for both these men. In fact, for everyone in this film. Wallace is cheating on his girlfriend, telling his podcast partner Teddy about it, making him lie to her, and his girlfriend's cheating on Wallace with Teddy. A whole cycle of damaged people hurting not only their own self-respect, but their relationships. For Wallace, we get glimpses of the root cause for this behavior. After trying and failing for years as a stand-up comedian, he found his niche in lampooning others' pain. But he wasn't even that good at it, because he needed to bring along his friend to bounce off of for material that engages the audience. He never respected himself, but managed to get a reaction anyway by laughing at others with others. Self-reflection took a back seat to this unexpected success. And where does that land him? Truly sorry for your loss. Sitting in a wheelchair with almost the exact same injury he was laughing at so loudly at the beginning of the film. 
but, but that's so different than Howard Howe's origin. In fact, I would argue that that man actually has respect. As a young man, he was shipwrecked and stranded on an ocean rock with nothing but a walrus to share company. This walrus actually aided in his survival for several days, almost befriending Howard. But as all island survival scenarios go, he grew desperate and killed the walrus for sustenance. The rescue boat arrived a few hours later. But he still talks about that walrus. He respects what it did for him and will never forgive himself until he gives that walrus a fighting fair chance. Howard's mind broke that day. His obsession turns deadly as he makes one attempt after another to recreate his friend. He's perfected these gruesome techniques over many victims, all culminating in... Humiliation. Oh, he's... Is that Wallace? Wallace the Walrus. Yes. God, they named him just for the rhyme, didn't they? So cruel. He's been made a reflection of his creator, now beyond any sort of social connection to the rest of the world. Instead, lost in his mind's eye around a singular moment from the past, one Howard regrets so heavily that he will say and do anything to recreate and rectify the actions he took that day. So in his respect for the walrus, he lost all aspects and even sense of humanity. His own obsession drove him further and further down the road to madness, isolating he and his victim on an island of Howe's own creation. Is this sounding familiar yet? Okay, again, I've been forced to do this ever since I started the show. Oh, please, I literally gave you the chance to walk away a few minutes ago, and you came back. Hair as bad as how, you know that? Well, it's just- You don't even think that I'm real. And yet, you listen to me, and let me have sway over your actions. Who but a madman would do that? Okay, I have to ask. Did the DM make you? No. You did. <laughs> I think I'd remember if I made a clone of myself. I'm you, but from a slightly different outcome. It turned out far different, as you can tell. How so? The fact that I shave once in a while? I loved the character of Guy Lapointe in Tusk. Oh. Oh, yeah, something happened to your brain. Because he was the whole reason this movie sunk. In a role originally written for Quentin Tarantino, Johnny Depp plays Guy Lapointe, a combination of Columbo and a swearing version of Tim Conway in Carol Burnett sketches. He's been investigating these disappearances connected to Howard Howe for years, but no one on the force ever listened to him, probably because he recounts stories like this one. Good afternoon to you, sir. I am Guy Lapointe. Oh, did you come here by the spider? So. Hmm? I called the police two days ago because there's a big old presider in my body hole. I'm sorry, the creepy crawler thing in your toilet box. Haha. <laughs> you know, no matter how many times I watch it, it's just painful. Where's Harvey Corman when you need him? I'll tell you why he's my favorite character. He's the only one that shows any respect throughout the entire movie. Okay, no! No, no! No, sir! No! I, I know what you're gonna bring up. Major spoiler alert for the ending, by the way. If he had any respect for Wallace, at the end of the film when he discovers the monstrosity, half-human, half-walrus, fully brainwashed into the walrus way of life, why would he not put the screaming monstrosity down? You can see he's fully poised to take that shot, and Wallace is clearly so far gone physically and mentally, he doesn't want to come back. The merciful thing to do would be end this suffering and lie to the family about how their son died a walrus. Merciful, maybe, but Guy Lapointe was not about mercy. He was about duty, as stated. As an uh, inspector of uh, the Sûreté du Québec, uh, I'm actually not authorized to discharge a weapon uh, at a bug. Despite what felt right in the moment, regardless of what everyone's gut instinct says to do, he respected the code that he could not discharge his firearm on what had truly become an animal. He's the only one on this whole journey who had any sort of code of ethics that he stuck to. Oh god, you're... you're right. It's almost more disgusting than seeing Wallace move. Nightmares for days, by the way. Thank you. It shouldn't surprise me if the only respect-worthy person rubs you wrong. That's not your game. Okay, what did I do to make you hate me? Because you clearly do. I'm here because you flippantly disrespected someone once upon a time. Really? Absolutely gorgeous. 
It's entertaining, but it's just ballet. Excuse me. Computer? Cut off the live feed and life support to Psycho, please. Wow, I had honestly forgotten about that. I didn't used to have this. When did this happen? Yeah, I'm the version of you that died that day. What? So, that you're... How are you talking to me? I asked, what would my life have been had it been allowed to continue? I wondered. I pondered. I begged to know. Eventually, I was given this window to observe. And now, seeing what became of me, I'm glad that I died. That's rude. I was wrong to compare you to Howard Howe. You're clearly Wallace. The man spent his entire life lost to himself, finding meaning only when he was ridiculing the efforts of others. What Howe did was repurpose him, gave him a new means, finally taught him a respect of a new self, which he embraced. He became a monster because he had no self to lose. You've been free to go for months, and yet here you are, back in this room. You'll keep coming back, too, because this is all you have to say. Finding the worst and making the best of it. That's your entire contribution to the conversation. I'm so glad that I'm not you. You know what? Thinking back on it, Tusk did make some good points about respect. The only road to any kind of conclusion came from one man walrusing up. And you can try to spin this away with the moral, but I know that you'll put in that next tape. And the next, and the next, because that's all that you have left. That's all you know how to do anymore. Have fun spinning down the rabbit hole. Exactly how Howard does. Howard how does how 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 how.